What's up Ann Arbor? Coming at you day 8 of the World Cup. Day 7 in the books. Just a reminder that today USA vs Slovenia kick off at 10 a.m. Join us at the AnnArbor.com community space. We'll be watching the game. Plenty of comfortable seating. Big screen TVs. Should be a good time. Uh, let's get right into day 7. Okay, we had Argentina vs South Korea. A really electric game. Argentina with 4 goals. 4-1 to one win. And uh, Gonzalo Hugain with a hat trick. Amazing. Yeah, only the 49th hat trick in World Cup history. I don't know if that's impressive or not. Um, more than I, more than I expected. More than I would have imagined. Um, Messi no goals in this game, but really, I mean, if you watch the game, you could tell he had a huge effect on this game. He's all over the place, creating space and scoring opportunities for Argentina. One thing to look out for is Argentina has these defensive laps. They gave up a goal right at the end of the first half to South Korea. They could have given up, given up one or two more. They're going to want to tighten it up, but right now, wow. Too much firepower, too much talent. Yeah, and even uh, Diego Maradona, the manager, is uh, doing his best, telling telling the press to get off his case, flicking them off, and telling Pele to go back to the museum. He's running in all cylinders right now. Okay, so the second game of the day, a uh, game which I didn't catch, I only caught the highlights of, but Nigeria and Greece, and uh, Greece pulled it out 2-1. to one. I think someone called it. Uh, so this was actually a game that, Absolutely changed after a red card to a Nigerian player. It was in about like the 35th minute, um, outside of the touchline. It's just a foolish foul. Um, obviously a great dive from the Greeks, but uh, Nigeria was up one nothing at that point, and uh, Greece evens it up before half, gets another goal in the second. First World Cup goal for the Greek side, and first World Cup win. Yeah, absolutely, and it came in uh, come from behind fashion, which that's the first time this World Cup that that's happened. So we're seeing some more back and forth here. Uh, okay, so get into Mexico versus France. Pretty cool fact here: Javier Hernandez scored, and in 1954, his grandfather scored in the World Cup against uh, France as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then a guy old enough to be his grandfather, Blanco, comes in, scores on a PK. Third World Cup in which he scored. Mexico looked great. They looked great, and they looked like they're having fun out there. France just did not want to be there. Um, Giovanni Dos Santos, my boy, doing work again, and pretty sure somebody called 2 nothing. Oh, wait, this guy did. Looking um, good. I think, you know, Mexico is supposed to be a natural adversary of the U.S., but I'm absolutely, I'm in with, uh, I'm, I'm down with Mexico. They look great, and uh, prospects of getting through look really good at this point. Yeah, I mean, I'm down for rooting against them when they're playing in the U.S., but you don't, you want your rival to be good enough so it's, it's still a good rivalry. So, And let's face it, the way they're both playing, it's a solid rivalry. So just to uh, let you guys know, keep you up to date on the goal totals here, after four games of the second round, we have a goal average of 3.25 per game. That's up from 1.5 in the first in the entire first round. So as predicted, people are scoring at will, and it's going to be better from this point on. My name is Brian Lamon. I'm a high school sociology, sports sociology, government teacher, and men's varsity <laughs> soccer coach. And my World Cup picks are the Selene High School baseball team, who's currently playing in the Final Four. Good luck, guys. I don't think Brian quite understood the question, but solid picks anyway. All right, so getting into today's games, we've got Germany versus Serbia, and anyone who picks anybody but Germany, I really don't know what you're thinking. I've got them. So does Mike Rothstein. What say you, Bob? Germany's driving down the Autobahn, keeping the pedal to the metal. 3 nothing. Yeah. Duh. Okay, so we're going to go England and Algeria next, a game that should be of much interest to U.S. fans. Uh, again, I don't know how anyone could pick anybody but England in this one. Yeah, I think England will give up another soft goal, whoever they choose to put in goal, but they're winning this game 3-1. And that gets into the game that, uh, again, we hope to see all of you at the Ann Arbor.com viewing party, USA versus Slovenia. USA's defenses look shaky, but that should not matter against this Slovenian squad. They should be able to come at them. Slovenia's actually been talking crap. Called out the U.S., said they were going to beat them. Tim Howard... He ripped right back. He said, yeah, a lot of boxers talk, and then they end up looking at the lights. So I like that cockiness out of a goalie. I'm taking U.S. 2-1 to one because I'm still a little curious about that defense. Tim Howard can't do it all. Yeah, with scoring up, I think 3-1 is my score of the day. I'll take that. U.S. probably will give up a goal, but they're getting the win here. Solid. Go USA. Mail.
All right, our first bit of mail comes from Johnny, who says, Why are American fans so upset over Vuvuzelas, but not the horrid U.S. defense? Well, the easy answer there, Johnny, is that we've only seen the U.S. defense once, but the Vuvuzelas are at every game. The U.S. defense really does need to improve, but because basically Tim Howard can't do it all, and uh, as good as they might have played against England, Tim Howard had to make a lot of incredible saves, and they, he can't do that every game. They need to tighten it up. That moves us on to the Vuvuzelas, and we've gotten a few other emails about, hey, we need to move on, and I'm kind of getting on board with that. I don't like them, but you know what? It's South Africa's party. They're serving the punch. Drink it or, you know, go home. Or just put your TV on mute and listen to Kenny G during the game. That uh, We'll call that plan B. <laughs> but that's like, I mean, going to South Africa and saying no Vuvuzela would be like going to Philadelphia with the Super Bowl and saying you can't boo. Yeah, I mean, it's part of their culture. We hope to see you at the USA vs. Slovenia viewing party at the Ann Arbor.com community space. Like I said, kickoff's at 10 a.m., 9 a.m., the door is open. We'll be there. Plenty of comfortable seating. And as always, you can always contact us at Peter Cunningham at Ann Arbor.com. That's Peter Cunningham at Ann Arbor.com. For Ann Arbor.com, I'm Pete Cunningham. He's Bob Gross, and we're out. Go USA.